We are going to look at linear inequality inference. Suppose that we have x at least 3 and y at least 2. So x is a number that is at least 3 and y is a number that is at least 2. Then intuitively we can conclude that x plus y must be at least 3 plus 2, which is 5. And more generally, if we have a at least b and c at least d, then we can infer the inequality a plus c greater than or equal to b plus d. And we say that this inequality is obtained from adding a greater than or equal to b and c greater than or equal to d. Now in the special case when c is equal to d, then we have a plus d greater than or equal to b plus d. And this is certainly true because d is greater than or equal to d. Now if we have a greater than or equal to b and c greater than or equal to d, is it true that a times c is greater than or equal to b times d? In general, the answer is no. And to see this, we can just look at the following example. 3 is certainly greater than or equal to 1, and negative 1 is certainly greater than or equal to negative 2. But if we multiply 3 and negative 1, we get negative 3. And if we multiply 1 and negative 2, then we get negative 2. But negative 3 is less than negative 2. So try not to make the mistake of multiplying inequalities. It doesn't work in general. But there's a special case that is certainly true. If c is a non-negative number and a is greater than or equal to b, then we can infer the inequality a times c greater than or equal to b times c. Now, if c is negative, but a is greater than or equal to b, then we can infer the following instead. a times c is less than or equal to b times c. So multiplying by a negative number flips the sense of the inequality. Let's now look at an example showing how these operations for inference can solve some interesting problems. Suppose that x and y are real numbers, satisfying x plus 4y greater than or equal to 5 and x plus y greater than or equal to 2. And we are asked to show that x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 3. So what can we do here? Well, the only operations we can perform are multiplying an inequality by a non-negative number and adding inequalities, given that they have the same sense. So we're going to try to manipulate these inequalities in such a way that the left-hand side becomes x plus 3y. And how do we do that? Well, let's multiply the first inequality by alpha, and we require alpha to be non-negative, and beta to the second one. So these are non-negative. And if we do that, I have alpha x plus 4 alpha y greater than or equal to 5 alpha. And the second one will give us beta x plus beta y greater than or equal to 2 beta. And now if we add these two inequalities, we'll get alpha plus beta times x plus 4 alpha plus beta times y greater than or equal to 5 alpha plus 2 beta. So what we want is alpha plus beta to be equal to 1, and that will give us x, and 4 alpha plus beta to be equal to 3, that will give us 3 as the coefficient of y. And so if we bring this up here, we want to solve alpha plus beta equal to 1, and 4 alpha plus beta equal to 3. And we have to remember that alpha and beta cannot be negative. Now, if we just solve these equations, we get 3 alpha equals to 2. You can see this by subtracting the first equation from the second equation. And so alpha is 2 thirds. 
and putting it back into the first equation, we get beta is equal to one third. So with these values, the left hand side will be x plus 3y. And the right hand side will be 5 times alpha, so 5 times 2 third plus 2 times 1 third. And this gives us 12 thirds, which is 4. So we have shown x plus 3y is at least 4 from this series of inferences. But we have x plus 3y greater than equal to 3. What do we do? Well, 4 is certainly greater than 3, but what we can do at this point is note that 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1. So if we add the inequality x plus 3y greater than or equal to 4 and the inequality 0 greater than or equal to minus 1, we obtain x plus 3y greater than or equal to 3.